Now we can just open up that original sky, sky paint texture. And since we haven't tweaked the size, we haven't done a lot of adjustment layer stuff, it's pretty safe. We can just go to the view we want to paint on and go to town. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to sample some of this sky. I want to, I want to pull a little bit more of this sun through. So right now I created a linear dodge layer and I'm just using a cloud brush to get a little more of that that color back into the sky. And it's kind of custom doing some custom painting so that it matches the new sun that we added in on the lighting effects. Then I'll take uh, an eraser and with a soft edge brush kind of feather this, tone it back a little bit. I don't want it too strong. Just enough so that the structure I'm about to add has a nice silhouette. So now I'm going to sample one of the the dark ambient colors from the tr from the background trees, just with my eyedropper. I'm going to start blocking in some some of this uh, structure, and I'm using just custom shapes that I have already saved. Um, so if you're not familiar with those, watch. I'd recommend watching one of our tutorials on it. Very handy. You could build a quick shape library together which creates a cohesive look once, you know, if, if like for instance, a lot of this stuff is from the heavy machinery reference on CG textures, just kind of tracing, tracing shapes I like. So not only does it fit in with my aesthetic style because it's, it's pieces that I find interesting, it all usually fits in together with the library. So building some, some crazy gears and supports, trying to get some variety. It's pretty easy with when you're just working with silhouettes in the background. And it's a, even if you haven't done much digital painting, this would be a kind of a great way to kind of dip your toes in it and, and see if it's something you enjoy. It's actually pretty manageable. Now I'm going to, on a new layer, make a, a kind of tall vertical shaft type thing. Maybe it's a drill or just maybe it's a, some kind of smokestack. I'm just kind of playing around right now. Rotate it so it's vertical. Keep building up some of these shapes. I have these little handrail uh, custom shapes that come in real handy. No pun intended there. <laughs> Anything that you can identify with scale, things like handrails, stairs, windows, doors, those are really what start selling your the massive shapes. Without those, you know, it'd be really hard to to gauge how big this structure actually is. Gonna choose a slightly lighter color just to build up some texture on the inside of this. I have these kind of paneling slash window textures. Um, don't really want them to look like they're lighting up, but I just want to switch, kind of add some noise to the surface. Drop down the opacity slightly. Okay, so now I merge all of those shapes down and it's it's starting to look like something. It's it's interesting, but it doesn't actually look like realistic to me yet. So I think we'll add some lighting in here. I got the selection of the custom shape just by control clicking the thumbnail on the layer menu. And then I made a, a new layer and filled that same selection with a highlight color that kind of matches the the sun in the background. Then I could just take a hard edge brush or a lasso or whatever and kind of erase out um, the area so I reveal the shadowed segments of this structure. So there we go. Kind of a nice quick way to get some rim light that matches the overall sun. It looks a little too stylized for me though right now. Um, it does, definitely doesn't match the, the photographic kind of style of the background. In this case I'm going to stick with normal but just drop the opacity on that layer down a little bit so it's not as harsh. And I'm going to slide the the hue over, get, give a little more warmth to it so it matches closer. That works pretty well. Now I want some more uh, kind of natural noise on the inside of this shape so I'm going to go back into CG textures, man-made, and go into heavy machines. And I'm just looking for something that would kind of be just natural like mechanical detail without too much perspective so it can match my flat view. This will probably have enough going on. 
So I'm gonna just copy and paste that in the scene. Control T to scale it down. Line it up on the structure. Then I'll just get my clone brush, make sure I fill most of the, the silhouette in so that when I delete the excess, it'll kind of con conform to the shape. That's fine, it can be real quick and dirty. Control click the background for the selection and then invert the selection and delete. And now I'll do the same thing with layer modes. I'll run this through a variety of layers and see if something stands out. Multiply right off the bat is, is looking pretty close. Um, it's a little dark, so I'm gonna drop down the opacity. But now there's a lot of um, cool details going on. It adds a little bit of realism and it wasn't didn't take too long. I wouldn't really call this kind of a finished level, um, but it would definitely give get a starting point, I think. Let's take the opacity down a little further even. You'll at least be able to to decide in your map if this is something you wanna you wanna keep and it wasn't too much of an investment. Use the eraser to kind of hit some of these edges back so it's not as uh, much contrast between the trees and the structure. I do want this to appear in front of the trees, so it's okay if it's the value's a little darker. Now I just made a quick lasso selection and hid the selection with Control H, and I just wanna have some kind of dust coming up and kind of surrounding this, this object. So even though it's a flat kind of two-dimensional view of it, Having having this dust or dirt flow th flow through the planes will help add some dimension to it. Do the same thing up on the stack. So just that change right there, I felt like really um, brought some more believability to this. Uh, adds some realism, and more than anything, it's it adds a level of interest to the scene. Maybe you know, with environment creation, it's all about exploring. So. If it, if it pulls you forward and makes you want to keep exploring the map, then I think it's a successful addition. Players might just be a little pissed when they realize it's a skybox, though. That's all right. So we go back into launch sky paint filter, and it gets implemented right back into our file. So you can kind of view a preview here. But at this stage, it's much better to preview it just in your actual map. So we save this image again. And remember, that's gonna update the whole sequence of the six images. So we open these. We're also gonna open the crytiffs that we've already saved out. Right now, I'm just trying to evaluate which texture it was that this, this building's gonna to align to. Doesn't look like three, four. Looks like one, two, but maybe the image will be on the bottom side. I'm gonna open up these template ones again just so I can make sure I register it correctly. So it looks like it's one two but this is actually flipped vertically. So I add those back in and I'll save it. Update the crytiff. Save over one two and once you have these uh, crytiffs and you update them it should be um, instantaneous with uh, CryEngine open for the update. In this case I had closed mine so I'll have to open it again but if you had it if you had it open the whole time, it would just snap to the update. So here we go. We have the crazy farm structure in the background. The, the additional sun is blending in nicely with the dynamic sun of the scene. It's, uh, I think it's working pretty well. At this stage, I would definitely polish up some of the highlight stuff I did, make it follow the contours of the building a little closer. So that concludes our chapter. Again, we took this into CryEngine, we saved out the CryTiffs correctly, and then we went back into SkyPaint and added new elements. Thank you very much.